Mr. President, thanks for having us. Yesterday we saw terrible pictures in Dagestan, videos from there, um, people trying to find Israelis on a plane hunting Jews. When you saw these pictures, what did you think? That they are shocking, that they are extremely worrying, that it's something that all governments should be uh, very much on alert, that it's purely anti-Semitic and, of course, instigated. I'm happy that the Russian authorities intervened and took control and seized control and pushed away the, uh, uh, the, the crowd that was threatening uh, the innocent civilians on the plane. By the way, some of them just citizens of Dagestan who came to a medical treatment or what's not in Israel. I mean, we have ongoing relations uh, with, uh, Russian, uh, with Russia in so many aspects that we have flights all over, including to Dagestan. And uh, they must continue. And for that, uh, I'm sure the Russian government will have to put top priority on this. How dangerous is it to be a Jew right now? Well, uh, unfortunately in history, uh, we know that it always starts with the Jews. It never ends with them. That's what I'm trying to explain, that we are actually in a certain conflict of values and, uh, and sort of civilizations. Those who celebrate hate, those who celebrate chopping heads of children, abducting pregnant women, holding hostage old uh, grandparents, and those who believe in democracy and freedoms and liberty and then moving towards peace. And the same goes for the treatment of Jews. Unfortunately, there is rising anti-Semitism all over the world, and all governments and all societies and civil societies must stand firm against this phenomena. Even in Germany, we see that on the streets, uh, people protesting. Um, we saw terrible pictures um, of people um, chanting against, uh, and, and against Israel, against Jews. If you see this in Germany, what does it well, make so sense? So first of all, we have to remember that a lot of these riots and protests all over the world are instigated and propagated by Iran which pours money into them, which pushes this anti-Jewish rhetoric all over the world in order to tear up Western societies, awakening old prejudices and hate against Jews, awakening political prejudices and hence hate against Jews, of course, using extreme Islam as a tool in this battle. When I saw it in Germany, of course, it immediately... Uh, steals emotions in my stomach, but I know that the German government now and the German people are uh, totally in a different place, and the German government is showing immense friendship, support, and moral clarity in this conflict. If you say it reminds people of history, um, I spoke to a lot of people who compared it to what happened um, during the, the Nazi uh, time. Do you feel the same? No, I cannot say that I feel the same because the, the, um, the Holocaust was a, a, a phenomenon that is so huge and overwhelming, there's nothing compared to it. But there are stories and there are tragedies and there are atrocities that remind people of the Holocaust, such as, for example, the fact that the highest numbers of Jews of ki were killed in one day since the Holocaust was 7th of October, such as carrying Jews like a, you know, a, a trade and, and, and uh, like kidnapped, abducted, and uh, uh, without any defense, defenseless Jews into uh, the, the abyss in Gaza, such as uh, the attack in Dagestan, which reminded me of a kind of a... Uh, uh, discrimination, discrimination against Jews when you're asking people, are you, who's Jewish here, in order to take them out and kill them. People That's, compared it with a pogrom. It is. It, it was like a pogrom. Thank God it was prevented at the end by the authorities. But it looked like a pogrom, and it was live, and everybody was worried about it. And what we saw in the, in, in the Gaza border with Israel is way beyond the pogrom. We saw a slaughterhouse. We saw blood pouring in the streets. We saw um, the, mo the most atro atrocious tragedies you can imagine. Um, uh, 
entire families. I'm, I'm really sorry to report to your viewers that we now, now, only now we got the note that Shani, Nicole, Luke, who was already interviewed by, her family was interviewed, her mother was interviewed by German newsreels, uh, has been uh, confirmed as murdered and dead. They found her skull, which means the, uh, the, uh, these barbaric, sadistic uh, animals simply chopped off her head when they were attacking and torturing and killing Israelis. It's a huge tragedy, and uh, I send uh, a lot of condolences to the bereaved, her bereaved family. She was a beautiful 23-year-old who went to a uh, music festival, nature festival, in, uh, in Reim, right near the border. Do you know, does the army, the intelligence, know more what happened to her and to other hostages? Well, now they've identified her. She's not, she, she it was found and now identified that we have about 40 bodies still unaccounted for because it's really difficult to identify its issues of DNA it's issues of parts of bodies. It's issues of burnt bodies. You know, there are there's a, there was a, families identified together in barbed wires, like, like in like in a concentration camp, in barbed wires and burnt. It's unimaginable. This is this is the um, civilization that is celebrated by ISIS and Daesh and Hamas. And I say to everybody, guys, you have to understand, if Israel is not there, Europe is next. They're going to go for Europe. That's what they're aiming at. And then for the United States, their big vision, their grand vision, is a totally different vision of the world that we are aiming and hoping uh, to lead these very days as, a, as the family of nations, despite all the conflicts. Does Germany have a special responsibility right now? Well, Germany is doing its best. Councillor Scholz was incredibly uh, warm, supportive, friendly. He showed immense moral clarity. And so is President Frank Walter Steinmeier, who is advising me almost on a daily basis about his ad activities to liberate the, the hostages, including those who hold German passports. And there are many. And that these are tragic families. I mean, some of them lost more, most of their loved ones, like the Haran family. How much hope do you have that the hostage will be freed? We are working on it. It's a top priority. I can't analyze it. I can't give chances. We are dealing with a cruel enemy. These enemies, they don't really operate according to the rules that you and I know. They decided to take these hostages like they've decided to create havoc on the civilian population in Gaza to hold them hostages and to bring pain, inflict pain and tragedies upon their own people. I, I visited on Thursday f about 40 Muslim families who, has, uh, who have lost their dear ones and loved ones in Israel, attacked by the Hamas. They don't differentiate between Jew and Muslim. Anybody who doesn't accept their vision of life is doomed to death or doomed to be abducted as a hostage. You talk about support. At the same time, we see a lot of criticism out there. Um, government leaders and international organizations accuse Israel of excessive attacks on civilians. I quote the Norwegian prime minister saying, um, the line has been crossed. How important is international approval for the actions against It's Hamas? important, but I quote Benny Gantz, who said, now it doesn't really matter. We care. we care. We care for our allies. We care for our friends. And we also care for your international law. We obey in your international humanitarian law. We were viciously attacked by thousands of missiles. We were all in shelters. We lost hundreds and thousands of people. Okay? In order to uproot the enemy who wants to annihilate us completely, who wants to uproot and destroy the only Jewish state in the world, we have to fight. Where do we fight? From where they send their launchers, from where they send their terrorists. They are using them. We have to go in and destroy those places. In those places, there are civilians. We tell the civilians in advance 
for weeks already. Move down south. We've arranged for you a special humanitarian zone supervised with the international community. We supply humanitarian aid. We opened up all the uh, crossings. We supply water and food and whatever is needed through Egypt that comes in under the international support of the United Nations and other agencies. And move down south. Now people are, are more than invited to do so. Unfortunately, Hamas is preventing 5,000 uh, holders of foreign passports to move out of Gaza. And so many nationalities are blocked by Hamas. And unfortunately, they're uh, blocking thousands of Palestinians from going from the north to the south. What do you tell people who argue and say publicly um, there's too many civilians getting killed in Gaza now? That is a huge tragedy that I feel pained by each and every one of them, that I care, that I want, we as a nation, we are not, we are not warmongers. We lived in peace. That region was booming. We opened up Gaza and enabled tens of thousands of employees to work in Israel. What they did, they collected information and they supported Hamas and they brought in lots of money and the money was used for a terror machine that slaughtered. You know who they slaughtered? Mostly people who loved peace, big supporters of peace. They abducted people who advocated peace. So what else can we do? It's a huge tragedy. But what do they expect us to do? To so sit idly by and wait for another massacre? Talking about uh, the ground okay. offensive, um, Netanyahu, the prime minister, said they are now in the second phase of the war against Hamas. And um, do you know, how, how would you assess the military situation and how successful Well, well we it? are operating in Gaza. It's no secret. Uh, we are operating in order to destroy Hamas military infrastructure. We are also putting a top priority on bringing back the hostages. We are working parallel. That's what I can comment right now, and our soldiers are doing what they need to do in order to protect our people how and long, defend ourselves. How long will that take? I cannot uh, um, determine. It can take a long time, but uh, I cannot determine. It depends on many outcomes. Former Prime Minister Eud Barak said in an interview, and I quote, the goal must be, after the war, a Palestinian state. Do you agree? I think it's premature, because I think every Israeli would ask himself, can I trust a Palestinian neighbor after what we've gone through? Who, who guarantees us that uh, it won't happen again? Who, th th this is the na a huge national trauma. So before we go into all these ideas, uh, we have to make sure that we're safe that we have security, that the international community supports us in our ability to defend ourselves. Talking, that's it. Talking about the international community, um, there is um, the President Erdogan, Turkish president, um, saying now, and, and I quote, um, there is a war uh, against us. Um, what do you make out well, of that? Well, I was very disappointed by the comments of President Erdogan. But, uh, you know, at the end, in international politics, you, you, we have an aim. We want to bring back our, the hostages. And we, want to, uh, and, and we want to defend ourselves and win the war. And I can't deal with each and everyone's comments. But I told you, I was, I was personally also disappointed. You said um, Germany was supporting um, Israel a lot in the, in the past weeks especially, but at the same time there was criticism um, of the neutral stance uh, in the UN um, of Germany um, regarding the resolution. Were you disappointed? I am not aware of, of that at all, I must say. I, I don't want even to discuss it. I think the resolutions, at the end, the, the United Nations is not showing at all. It's... Uh, its uh, objectives. It's not serving its objectives for a long time. It's in a deadlock. And so the, the whole issue of what the world order the day after and who runs what can be discussed. But for me, what's now important is what I told you. We have to focus on that. And anybody who can help bring back the hostages is blessed. And I know they're trying to do that as well, also in the United Nations. Would you welcome an international coalition like Macron said 
should fight. I liked Macron's idea. I thought it was innovative. It was original. It makes sense. As I said, because of the clash of civilizations, and again, I want to stress again, it's not a clash between Islam and Judaism or Islam and Christianity. And it's not all the Palestinian people. Okay, By, President Biden, who's a huge friend of ours and uh, showed immense moral clarity, he said it's not, all, it's not the Palestinians. It's, a, it's one faction in a nation that celebrates the most horrific atrocities possible, which shows they are not part of anything. So they should and, these, they, and, that, and that arm must be eradicated by a major effort of the international community, such as they've done to ISIS. So you think it would be a good idea if, for example, the U.S., Germany, France... Well, they were so all there is part. a coalition fighting ISIS. Now we have to analyze if it can be replicated also uh, to fighting Hamas. It makes a lot of sense. It's a test for all our friends to show that they're willing also to work on it. Talking about the situation after a war, how should Gaza be governed? I would uh, be cautious in speaking about how Gaza should be governed because it's not for me to decide. There's a government, there's a cabinet, there's a war cabinet. They're dealing with it, with the various players in the international arena, local and regional arena. There are many ideas thrown to the table. Let's discuss them, but not publicly. If you see what happens in Iran, do you think Iran could become part of the war, or is Iran already part of it? We are following it very closely. It all starts in Iran. The coalition of hate, this uh, um, coalition of uh, evil, as I call it, with its forks all over the region, in Gaza, in Lebanon, in Yemen, in, in Iraq, all over the world. It's a coalition that wants to undermine the whole future of inclusion of Israel in the region, the whole process of peace between Israel and its neighbors, it wants to undermine the ability of the world to move together to a new and a different Middle East, but it won't work for them. I believe the process has started. I'm convinced that the train has left the station and we will have more and more peace agreements in the region. And a reality whereby we can hold a NATO-like structure in the Middle East to protect ourselves against such evil. At the end of our interview, Mr. President, I would like to discuss uh, what's the discussion right now in Germany. And um, there's a big debate if our, if Germany's refugee policy in 2015 um, made Jews feel less safe in Germany. Well, I can't intervene in, uh, in German public life. I can always say that major part of the anti-Semitic wave we are seeing now comes from uh, Muslim communities, but not everywhere, and not all the time, and not by everyone, okay? We, I don't want to generalize, but we do know that there are extreme Islamists also in Europe who are pass, part and parcel of this wave, terrible wave of hate. And I always remind everybody, it starts with the Jews, it never ends with the Jews. And Europe should understand that it's this battle, it's on its own safety and well-being. That we are fighting with the forces of light against the forces of darkness. Europe must continue supporting the forces of light and should, and, and should hope that we prevail and overcome. I'm sure we will. But this is exactly the message to Europe. Are you personally afraid when you see what's happening on the streets in Germany and elsewhere? I'm not personally afraid because I believe governments can contain it and deal with it and our police forces. But I'm worried. That's all I'm saying. I'm worried for my brothers and sisters in the Jewish community, for all people of Germany and Europe. And I call upon everybody to be on alert and learn the lessons, the lessons necessary.